Have you ever looked through your pantry and thought, hmm, this stuff looks kind of sticky. I wonder if my 3D prints are going to stick to it. Well, I have, so that is exactly what we're going to try today. I've grabbed myself some 16 by 16 centimeter glass that's going to go on top of the bed of my Mendel 9001. And yes, it looks kind of crude and wild, but this is the ideal test platform. Um, it's got an E3D Himera in there. It's got a high power heated bed and a Duet Wi-Fi controlling all of it. So yeah, we're going to try some things today. Let's go shopping. So with the cling film, I was hoping I would be able to melt or bond it onto the glass just by applying heat. But it didn't work in the oven, it just peeled back. And even when trying with a hot air gun, I was able to melt the film, but it did still not stick to the glass. So the cling wrap is out. So these are my test samples. Let's go through them real quick and see how they turned out. So first off, wood glue. I thought this one was pulling together while it was drying. So I tried to even it out and wipe it clean again, but that only smeared it more. But on closer inspection, this surface is actually quite well covered and I think is gonna make an excellent specimen. Next, the black spray paint. Really not much to say about that, except that black beds really look kind of awesome. Then we've got the off the shelf extreme hold hairspray. And if I point it into the light, you can maybe kind of see a texture, but this really dried to a, you know, almost a, a clear lacquer kind of finish. So you barely see anything on here at all. Then we've got the pineapple sauce, the pineapple juice. Um, I think I heated this a bit too much in the oven. This almost caramelized, but it is still really sticky. Like it's pulling moisture from the air and getting that stickiness back. So that's gonna be interesting to see how it behaves on a hot heated bed because my oven isn't really totally level uh, you can see one side is a bit thicker than the other and we can see which one's going to stick better next up the toothpaste now this one actually felt really awesome right out of the oven it was almost like a ceramic covering so this stuff is actually silica gel hydrated so the stuff you have in those little drying packets um, if you add water to it you get that gel like consistency and because toothpaste has those little abrasive particles in it this is a really kind of rough textured grippy surface Really interesting to see how well that grips. So sriracha sauce, you can see that stuff is very sticky still. It was kind of hard to spread around, but um, yeah, it is very tacky, very sticky. It's gonna smell awesome while printing, I know that much. Next up, the pasta water. Now you can see this one actually left a really noticeable film on top and on the edges where it kind of pulled up, it did turn brown, but that's because, well, it is essentially liquid pieces of, of pasta. Um, kind of tacky still. It's not totally dry, it feels like it's, it's pulling in moisture from the air, but um, yeah, on the bed, I think when we heat it up, it might be really good and really grippy because it is starch. And then we have soy milk. Well, wait, it's a soy drink. You're not legally allowed to call it milk in Germany. Um, so this one is really hard, almost like a glass-like coating on top of here. Um, this one's more or less a wild card. I really don't know how it's going to perform, but we shall see. So I'm also gonna throw in regular packing tape. This is a very thin PET film with an acrylic adhesive. So kind of similar to some of the bed stickers you can buy, some duct tape. And for comparison to like tried and true solutions, uh, we're gonna do 3D lac as a hairspray like coating. We're gonna use the glue stick that Prusa is shipping and we're just gonna use a clean sheet of glass. 
at least for PLA. So before we get to printing, I think I should briefly talk about what I'm going to be printing. So I'll try two materials. I'll try PLA, which I'll be using the dust filament PLA for. And if that succeeds, I'll move on to PETG. Not for the plain glass, that's going to rip a shard of glass out of it. But for any material that the PLA sticks to, I'm going to move up to the PETG. This is a part that should be very warp happy. So yeah, let's go try and see which one of these actually stick. Oh, and I almost forgot the egg white, which leaves a somewhat tacky but dry feeling, nice even coating on it. But it's got this crackly structure to it, which looks really interesting. Shouldn't make a difference for printing, but just wanted to point that out. Looks really cool. And just to reduce the number of times I would have to check in on the printer and restart the print, I decided to clamp two of my test pieces side by side and use sequential printing to print on two materials in one go. And after a quick leveling run, I was ready to start my testing. And this one happened faster than I was able to record it, but the toothpaste actually was sticking to the print pretty well, but it was peeling off from the glass. So the toothpaste is out. And while this is printing, let me talk about the sponsor of today's video, Autodesk and their software AutoCAD. Of course, you are familiar with Autodesk's Fusion 360. You might even be using it for modeling some parts already. AutoCAD is a bit different, focusing on providing CAD tools for architects, structural engineers, and construction professionals. So, for example, it's including specific tools for electrical control systems, heating and plumbing, or plant design. You also get industry libraries with over 750,000 intelligent objects and parts ready to be used in your drawings and projects. Of course, they've also got powerful web and mobile apps so that you'll always have your plans with you wherever you go, at home and at the job site. And if you ever need help, an AutoCAD subscription not only includes their online training, but also gives you access to their support specialists through chat, email or phone, where they can even assist you with a remote desktop session. You can try out AutoCAD for free with a 30-day trial, link in the description. And if that has you convinced that it's the right tool for you, they're offering 10% off for a three-year subscription. But you can also choose a flexible plan if that suits you better. Check out the links in the description. Thanks, Autodesk. So that's round number one done with PLA on all the different surfaces that I wanted to try. One thing that I noticed is that this three millimeter glass is anything but three millimeters. So if I measure this one, this is 2.85 millimeters and each piece of glass is slightly thicker or thinner than the other one. So there is a slight deviation of maybe two hundredths or so between each of these pieces. So the way I compensated for that was to print with a thicker and wider first layer, just like I routinely show you guys when you have uh, a bed that's not perfectly level or you're just printing at very thin layer heights, you just increase the width and height of your first layer and that just makes sure it sticks better even if your bed isn't perfectly leveled. Or you have a bumpy bed, you know, which is not that common, but for example, if you have something like uh, the pineapple juice that isn't really flat, then this is gonna compensate for that as well. All these samples were printed rather high, so with a nozzle a bit too far away from the bed, um, that's just to save my nozzle from any damage, but it also stresses the bed surface a bit more than if it were perfectly smooshed down. So all the prints that did stick already stuck down under adverse conditions. So let's start out with the surfaces that I knew would work, which are, you know, best practice already for printing PLA. So that's the two that were on the bed right here and this one back here. So obviously glue stick, the Cordes glue stick that Prusa supplies, um, that one stuck down perfectly, you just saw me peel that. Um, the 3D lac, as always, even on unheated beds, just sticks down extremely well. There we go. And even though this one was also printed a bit too high up, 
that stuff just sticks like crazy. Um, and lastly, the just clean glass, clean float window glass also stuck down perfectly. And as you just heard, that releases with a very satisfying noise. Uh, there is a bit of a layer shift in there. I think one of my motor cables came loose because the next print just wouldn't start. So this shift is not an issue with the surface, but one with the printer. So yeah, that's not really news that these three surfaces work because I mean, we were expecting them to work. It's just a, a double test. If you know these didn't stick down, then there is something seriously wrong with the setup. So let's move on to the surfaces that did not work and that are out for further experimentation. Uh, sriracha sauce, unfortunately, just did not stick at all. I think there's not enough sugar in here to actually get the PLA to stick down. So you're out. Uh, the next up, the soy milk, soy drink one, uh, leaves a very nice finish, but unfortunately not the right material for PLA to stick onto. So that's out as well. Maybe something like rice milk would work better. I don't know. Uh, next up, the toothpaste. Now, this one's interesting because right out of the oven, this felt really promising. However, um, yeah, it just does not stick to the glass. It peels right off. Maybe with a with an extra layer of like adhesion modifier to the glass and then the toothpaste on top. But as is, doesn't work. Toothpaste is out. Next up, the duct tape. Um, this one actually left a mark in the tape where the nozzle or the material, the filament, tried to extrude down onto. But I think because this is like a waxy kind of non-stick surface almost, PLA does not stick to it. Maybe if you were printing with a PE or something, it would stick better to this. But as is, the duct tape is out as well. And the packing tape did not work for PLA either. Now, it did show some promises, like it, the, the first layer was kind of starting to stick down, but it just did not provide enough adhesion. Now, this one's a bit of a special case, because for PLA, it does not work. But because I think this is a PET film, I will retry it for PTG. So I'm thinking it, the PETG should actually bond very well to the packing tape, but we will try that in the next round. So moving on to the ones that did work. And the first one is kind of a, an edge case. So this pineapple juice stuff, it did stick down. Like you can see the PLA part actually sticks down incredibly well to the pineapple juice. But I'm kicking this one out as well because as you can see, this is extremely disgusting to work with. Uh, out of the oven, after it was dried, it felt really promising, but it keeps sucking moisture from the ambient air and just turns into this Ah, uh, gooey, sticky, I mean, I can, I can peel this stuff off. Like this is absolutely disgusting to work with and not something you want in your 3D printer. So the pineapple juice, even though it works, is out. So let's move on to the ones that did work, starting with the pasta water. And this one was a bit of a surprise because this stuff actually does work. It sticks down. It's almost a bit similar to the pineapple juice as it seems to be sucking moisture out of the air. And this is, this is tacky right now, but it is way less disgusting than the pineapple juice. You know, in a pinch, you could absolutely print your PLA parts onto pasta water covered glass. Next up, the hairspray, and of course, hairspray is somewhat similar to 3D Lac. However, I've not found a commercial hairspray that sticks down as well as 3D Lac. Um, can is right here. Even though this is like the extreme hold, whatever, no name, there shouldn't be that much stuff in it that would prevent adhesion, it did not stick down as well as 3D Lac, and that is an improvement over the hairsprays that I've tried previously. And with the test print, you can see the larger side actually did stick down very well, but the thinner, more warp happy side did lift up. Then wood glue, not really a surprise, honestly, and this sticks down really well too. So wood glue is mostly PVA, and PVA is basically, well, glue stick, just in a different form. And yeah, it's still sticking down extremely well. There we go. So I would say a layer of wood glue is an excellent choice for PLA. Like this thing printed with no warping at all. And the surface even seems to be completely intact. There's a bit of a mark on there, but you could totally print on this again. So that's really gonna be interesting for PTG, how well it performs there. Now, while the wood glue was reusable and stayed on the glass, uh, the paint, the black spray paint, did stick really well too, but you can see it is really coming off the glass very easily. So you can see where the skirt pulled off parts of the paint, where the clips pulled off paint and the part itself as well. So there's black spray paint stuck onto the bottom of you know the print itself, but it's stuck on there with minimal warp. The fine tip of the testing part actually warped slightly, but the blunt tip stayed on perfectly. So this is moving on into round two as well. And lastly, we've got the egg white. 
What a surprise! This one actually stuck down perfectly as well, and it releases very easily uh, once the print is done. So the surface seems unharmed, and the test print itself is perfectly flat. So this is a very good contender for round two as well. Okay, so we've got nine contenders for round number two. We've got hairspray, pasta water, wood glue, egg white, the black spray paint, and packing tape. And for reference, the three solutions that we know are gonna work are glue stick, 3D lac, and plain glass with nothing on it. Now, PTG is extremely likely to bond very well to the plain glass, so there are chances that we're not gonna be able to get our piece of PTG off of our plain glass, but that's all right, I bought these pieces of glass for specifically for testing, for trying these things out. Um, but if you're printing PTG onto a plain glass surface, put some glue stick in between because chances are the glass is not gonna survive it. All right, so that is the last print done and that's the black spray paint. Now, looking at these results, I am surprised because literally every single one, every single material that I tried worked. It stuck down perfectly. The only little sign of curling that I can see is on the black spray paint one where the fine point kind of lifted up just ever so slightly, but every other material gave me a perfectly flat print even on the pointy end. Now, there are a few surprises. First of all, this one is the plain glass, the, uh, you know, plain clean glass. And instead of the PTG bonding to the glass so well that it, you know, destroys the glass, this came off very cleanly after the print and it's got a perfectly smooth bottom. So I think I'll need to retest what types of PTG actually bond to glass and what type of glass they need for that to happen. So in most of these prints, the part is still stuck down onto the glass. On some, it has more or less released by itself. So the egg white, um, actually it came loose pretty well, but it took the uh, coating, the egg white coating with it from the glass. So it did work, it did stick down, but it's a single use material for PTG and now you have like organic egg white stuck to your printed parts and I'm not sure whether you actually want that. The pasta water has also released, but in this case uh, the coating is still perfectly intact. So yeah, it still feels tacky. Now that brim just looks like it took off a bit of the material, but overall the pasta water seems to be a fairly robust and reliable coating as well. So one note on these PTG prints is that I set the nozzle a bit lower. I recalibrated that with a piece of paper. Um, so this first layer is smushed down a bit better. So that might explain a part of why the PTG actually stuck down better than the PLA. But still, if a material does not want to hold down PTG, it wouldn't have worked here. So let me break free the rest of these parts real quick and we can see which of these coatings actually survived and which of these are single use. So those actually came free very easily and they all seem to be mostly undamaged. The 3 lac has a bit of a pattern on there where the part used to be, but other than that, even the packing tape survives perfectly. And again, all these materials provided really good adhesion even for a part that is naturally warp heavy. Now, of course, I could print this bigger and it would probably warp more, but I think for normal prints, any of these materials would work. And honestly, I'm kind of not seeing the, the point of using a expensive 3D printer specific adhesive anymore uh, when something like just regular old wood glue just works perfectly. Now, of course, we all knew that regular glue stick and even, you know, other brands of glue stick stick down a print really well, but I'm surprised that even stuff like egg white or pasta water uh, stuck down so incredibly well. Now I wouldn't necessarily recommend these two simply because they are organic matter and they can foul over time uh, and they're a bit of messy to apply and also the hairspray simply because there's so much of a variance between different brands and types of hairspray. Some might work, some might not, so that's always still a gamble. The black spray paint I think would work really well on a aluminum or a plastic surface. So that could be a handy one if you ever need to use it. And as for the other materials that got eliminated in round one, which is pineapple juice, sriracha sauce, uh, soy milk, duct tape, and toothpaste. Now these are not that reliable, um, whether it's, you know, that it's just a consistency that kind of doesn't work and it's kind of 
unpleasant to work with uh, or simply because the you know properties of the material are not suitable for printing on. But if you've discovered something that works well as a bed adhesive that you might not immediately think of when you're looking for something to stick down your prints, uh, let me know in the comments below. And if you liked the video, you know, do the thumbs up, uh, get subscribed if you want to see more like it, and if you want to support the channel directly, you can do so through Patreon or the YouTube memberships feature. Uh, that is much appreciated. So thanks for watching, keep on making, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.